So good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. This is our fourth and final webinar of the Healthy Eats for a Healthy Beat series. And what better topic to end it on than sugar and sweets? All of these webinars are being recorded and we'll send you the links to these in our follow-up email later this afternoon. Next slide, there we go. All right, so my name is Kristen Bogdonis and I'll be your moderator today for this presentation. Diane Reinhold and Jenna Smith will be our presenters. Diane is a nutrition and wellness educator and registered dietitian from the Northwest corner, serving Joe Davies, Stevenson, and Winnebago counties. Jenna Smith, um, she'll be demonstrating a recipe in the second half of the presentation. And she is also a nutrition wellness educator and registered dietitian from the central part of the state, serving Livingston, McLean, and Woodford counties. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation, go ahead and um, type those in the chat box and we can get to those at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Diane for her presentation. Thank you so much, Kristen. For those that may not know, the University of Illinois Extension is a flagship outreach effort of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And we offer research-based educational programs to residents of Illinois in all 102 counties and far beyond. So today we're going to be talking about added sugar. Um, and so why is it um, important to limit the added sugar in your diet? Well, the reason for that is, is because a diet high in added sugar has been linked to many chronic health conditions, such as heart disease, diabetes, kidney and liver disease, as well as certain types of cancer, such as colon and pancreatic cancer. It is also implicated and linked in um, cognitive issues. So um, it um, contributes to issues with uh, dementia and Alzheimer's, as well as uh, weight gain and so obesity, tooth decay, and just an overall poor nutritional status. If you're consuming foods that are high in added sugars, you're very likely not consuming foods that are high in other nutrients. So you may be wondering, okay, so how does sugar tie into heart disease? Well, recent data suggests that dietary factors are responsible for more than 40% of the most common cardiometabolic-related deaths in the United States. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, cardiometabolic-related deaths, what, what does that even mean? Well, it's a fancy term um, that the term cardiometabolic event um, is simply um, a factor um, that increases the risk of a person developing or having a cardiovascular event, event such as a heart, a heart attack or a stroke. Um, when one or more of these factors listed um, are included. So if you're overweight, if you have high LDL or high triglycerides, if you have high blood pressure or low HDL cholesterol, you really want your HDL cholesterol to be high. Um, if you have diabetes or if you're smoking, all of these, um, all of these are risk factors in addition to consuming a diet high in added sugar. So you're like, okay, well, I've heard that, but you know, is there any proof in the pudding? Well, there is. There's a numerous studies um, that implicate um, a diet high in added sugar along with chronic diseases. Um, one I'd like to highlight is a 2011 um, study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. And what they found was that looking at the biometric um, measurements um, so looking at lab work, looking at, you know, weight and BMI, um, what they found was that a diet high in added sugar increases our inflammatory markers. And the more we're learning about inflammation, the more we know that it, really that inflammation drives a lot of our chronic illnesses. But really, to set, um, sugar is also going to be um, increasing those inflammatory markers. A diet high in sugar is also linked to insulin resistance, um, as well as weight gain, and um, 
it increases our LDL cholesterol and we want that number to be low. Now, more research is needed and it's kind of exciting because as time goes on, we learn more and more things because we really don't know the um, mechanic, the mechanisms that are involved in the role that sugar plays within our bodies. And so as they continue to do more research in the coming years, it's exciting because we're gonna be able to learn a lot more um, things. So you might be thinking, okay, well, I'm gonna like quit eating sugar. And you, that could be possible, but you have to understand why sugar is added. So sugar provides more than just a sweet taste. Sweetness um, does have an almost universal appeal. Um, however, sugar plays an important role in the chemical reactions that occur, whether we're baking, cooking, or preserving food. So understanding the science behind it is really important. And I'll just kind of highlight some of the, the roles that sugar plays. So sugar binds easily to water, which then accomplish, accomplishes two things. One, it locks in moisture, keeping your baked goods from drying out, but it also inhibits the development of gluten, which then keeps your cookies, cakes, and sweetbread soft. It's also important um, when you're following a recipe that says, cream the sugar and butter together um, or shortening um, because when, during that creaming process, the sugar crystals are gonna rub against that fat or that shortening causing air packets. And then when leavening agents are added, these air pockets can grow a little bit larger. And then during the baking process, that air cells expand causing your baked goods to rise. Um, and the length of time that you cream your sugar and um, fat will determine the amount of air that is um, in the mixture. So again, following the recipe is really important. Um, it can also act as a bulking agent. So if you think about ice cream, some of your baked goods, it also plays an important role in food preservation, especially um, with regards to jams and jellies. You know, sugar is essential in the gelling process of jams and jellies and preserves. Um, it provides consistency and firmness. And then there are certain recipes where you may have um, acidic foods and you add a little sugar and that helps balance the acidity um, of certain types of foods. And so some examples would be tomato or vinegar based foods. So now, you, now we're gonna talk about identifying sugar. Uh, identifying added sugar can be confusing. So let's look at a few ways that we can identify it. First, I'd like to um, define what added sugar is because um, it's good that you know, people are becoming educated, but it's also important that they are educated with the, the correct knowledge, the correct information. So added sugars are sugars and, and syrups that are added to foods or beverages when they're processed or prepared. However, this does not include naturally occurring sugars, such as those found in milk and fruit. So here I have a, a picture of banana bread. So if you think about banana bread, it contains um, bananas, and depending on your recipe, it might uh, contain um, a bit of, of milk. Um, and so when you were, if you were to make banana bread, the banana sugars, the fructose, the milk sugars, the lactose, those would not be included because they're not part of the definition of an added sugar. So luckily for us, we have um, the FDA that is looking out for us. And a couple of years ago, they're like, hey, we're gonna redo the nutrition facts label. So here we have the original label. And on this label, um, it just says sugars. However, it doesn't tell us the difference between uh, natural sugars or added sugars. Here, that new label breaks that out. And so this is really important so that we can meet the dietary guidelines um, and limit our um, total added sugar to only 10% of our total calories. So here, we're gonna look at the nutrition facts label a little bit closer. So here, uh, our total sugar 
um, is going to be listed in grams of serving for that product. And it includes all, all of the sugars. Um, so it, it can include the naturally occurring ones, um, fructose and um, lactose, like I mentioned. And the interesting tidbit about total sugars, there is no percent daily value. Um, added sugars, we do have a percent daily value and it should be, it should be no more than 10% of your total calorie intake for the day. And added sugars, remember, are the sugars that are added during the processing or preparing of the foods. Now, if you look at a nutrition label and you're like, okay, well, um, it doesn't say anything about added sugars. However, if you look at the label, you can see that it does have sugar um, included. And so this product contains sugar. However, it's just not added sugar. It's naturally occurring. If you look at what it is, it's a fruit bar um, and it's blueberry. So even though it contains sugar, um, it is just not added. So if you're curious about when you're looking at the nutrition tax label, what are some of the different names for sugar? There's a whole host of different names. So I always tell consumers, you know, be educated, consumer beware, know what those names for um, added sugars are and what they look like. Some people think, oh, well, I don't use sugar, I use honey. Well, honey still contains sugar. It's just a more natural form of sugar. Um, lactose, again, that's the sugar that comes from milk. Um, fructose, the type of sugar that comes from fruit. So my question for you is think about how much sugar you are actually drinking. Um, because knowing that you need to limit your sugar and being mindful of how much sugar you're actually consuming is going to really help you fall within those guidelines and stay within those guidelines. And so seeing is believing. So you can figure out how many grams of sugar are in the beverages. And so here we have a sweet tea. I know that's something that's popular in this part of the state that I live in, energy drinks, um, those sweet and coffee drinks, um, they all have a lot of added sugar. And so for every four grams of sugar on the nutrition facts label, that will equal one teaspoon of sugar. So 12 grams would then equal one tablespoon. And when you think about it, okay, you're like, okay, 14 teaspoons. So if you were to stack up four sugar cubes and say, okay, would I actually eat four sugar cubes? But it's so much easier just to drink it. So again, being aware and being mindful of the foods and beverages that you're putting into your body. The other thing I wanna talk about is the dietary guidelines for Americans. They recommend limiting the total um, amount of added sugars to less than 10% of our total calories. So if you have, if you're eating a 2000 cal calorie a day diet, that means that only 200 calories should be coming from sugar and that that would equal um, 50 grams. Most people aren't eating 2000 calories, especially if you're um, older, if you have more of a sedentary life, you're probably down at the um, 18, to 1700 or even 1600 calories. So you're gonna be consuming even less grams of added sugar each day. Now consumers also have to be mindful and aware of some of the marketing strategies that are out there. If you see a product that says no added sugar, well, it doesn't mean that there's not sugar in there. It simply means that it is, hasn't been added. So it wouldn't fall under the guidelines of added sugar. Um, Sugar-free products, they're gonna contain less than 0.5 grams of sugar per serving. And if you see a product making the claim that it has reduced sugar, it needs to have at least 25% less um, sugars per serving compared to the traditional brand. So how can you limit sugar? Well, first become familiar with the nutrition facts label. Read that, um, read the nutrition facts label, look for added sugars and read the ingredient list. Um, choose packages of food that have less or no added sugar. Um, select fruits as a natural sweet dessert um, or for a snack. 
when you are again thinking about beverages really think about okay i had no idea that my energy drink that i have every day has so many grams of added sugar so you're going to want to limit those products also consider um, um when you when you choose um desserts you're going to want to um limit those and only consume them occasionally or you can share them with someone else or have a smaller portion. Another um, place you can find a lot of hidden sugars are in our condiments. So ketchup, sriracha sauce, barbecue sauce, those are all products that have a lot of added sugar. And if you're purchasing canned fruit or frozen fruit, I always purchase the fruit that has no added sugar. Um, and then you can also make substitutions when baking. And that is what Jenna is going to do for us today. So I'm going to ask everyone to um, go ahead and um, up in the top corner, um, you'll see the three dots. And if you can turn that into, um, click on the speaker view, then you'll be able to see um, Jenna's cooking demo. All right. Okay, great. Thank you, Diane. Uh, well, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you here uh, how to make these carrot pineapple muffins. And this muffin is a big hit with my own family. Uh, I have two young boys and a matter of fact, they were really upset with me this morning that I did not allow them to eat one of these muffins because I wanted to save them to show you guys. Um, so they'll get them later. But you know, it, it's, it's a muffin that I feel good to even give to my kids because you know, it does have some added sugars, but it's a lot less of added sugars than a lot of the other muffins that you might be making or muffins that you might be buying at the store or the bakery. So, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're going to actually start with our carrots. So I'm gonna shred these carrots. This is a medium sized carrot. Um, I've already washed it. And when you do wash your carrots, it's good to get a, a clean scrub brush and to scrub it uh, nice and clean. And by doing that, you really then don't have to peel your carrots. So we've already, I've already washed it. I'm just gonna take the stem right off of that. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use uh, my grater and I'm just gonna kind of grate this carrot with that. Now, if you are working with a lot of carrots, you could certainly uh, use a food processor. But since we only need two thirds cup of grated carrot, uh, you know, food processor is probably a little bit of an overkill. Plus, it's just a means more to clean up and who wants more to clean up. So the simple grater is going to work. So I need about about two thirds cup of this. Now I've already grated some. I've already grated about a third of a cup and added that to my bowl. So I just need enough here. Fill up my other third of a cup and we'll add this. Now carrots, of course, are really nice and healthy for us. They have a lot of great uh, beta carotene, which converts to vitamin A in our bodies. They have a lot of dietary fiber, as well as a lot of potassium. So they're really good, but I do wanna make note that you know there's only two thirds cup of, uh, of carrots in here. And so with that in mind, you know that's for 12 muffins. One muffin is not going to be a vegetable serving. So I'm sorry, but uh, you can't, just say that this is your vegetable. This is not a vegetable for you. All right, so I'm gonna move that out of my way. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add some uh, of the other ingredients. So I've got some eight ounce can of crushed pineapple. Now note that that says an eight ounce can of crushed pineapple. That sometimes can be pretty hard to actually find. So if you are cannot, cannot find the eight ounce of the smaller can, you want to go ahead and use that 20 ounce can, that kind of a regular size. Just measure out then one full cup of that. And that will then, you know, make sure you add some juices to that. And that will equal that eight ounce can of crushed pineapple. So I did buy the unsweetened crushed pineapple. And that's really important. So whenever you're buying any kind of canned fruits, make sure that you're buying canned fruits that is packed in its own juices rather than in syrup or a heavy syrup. For adding syrup, and that just means then, um, you know, that, that, that has sugar in it, it has added sugars. So buy those fruits in the juices. And that's what we did here with our pineapple. Now the pineapple for these muffins gives it a nice tropical feel. The great thing too, is it adds a lot of moisture to these muffins. So the muffins are not dry, they are really good. 
Okay, my next ingredient is oil. This is three tablespoons of canola oil. And with that, the um, most you know, muffin recipes take about four tablespoons, a fourth of a cup, or even more uh, oil. And so this recipe, we're able to drop that down to three tablespoons. And we're able to do that because we are adding applesauce as well. And so that's gonna help us to actually decrease the amount of fat that's in these muffins. Now, of course, canola oil is really good for our, our bodies. This is something that is really high in unsaturated fats, most, mostly mono unsaturated fats, and they can help to decrease our cholesterol levels. And that of course then can help to decrease heart disease. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, that is uh, certainly really wonderful to be able to, you know, use uh, those types of oils. But again, because we're using the applesauce, we're able to decrease that a little bit and that just means we're able to decrease the amount of calories. Okay, so I'm gonna add my applesauce. So this is two tablespoons of unsweetened applesauce. And again, this is really helpful to be able to decrease the oil that's in the baked good. And again, we're buying unsweetened applesauce and that just means have uh, any added sugars in that applesauce. So the applesauce is also going to help to serve to, again, bring a little moisture to the muffin, as well as bring a little bit of sweetness to it as well. Next up, we're going to actually add our water. So this is a fourth of a cup of water, and that's just gonna give us a little bit of liquid to our batter. And then we're gonna add one tablespoon of white vinegar. Now, don't turn your nose on that one. I promise you, you will not be able to taste the vinegar in these muffins. But the vinegar actually serves a really important purpose. The vinegar is uh, an acid, and that acid is going to actually react with the baking soda that we're gonna add. And that reaction uh, brings about carbon dioxide and that makes bubbles form, and that's what's going to help our muffins to actually rise. So you don't wanna forget that vinegar. Okay, so this is basically my wet ingredients. I'm gonna just kind of stir that up here. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work on our dry ingredients. So I'll we'll go ahead and switch our bowls. All right. And I'm gonna, first of all, add our all-purpose flour. And with that, I'm gonna show you uh, just how to um, you know, measure out the all-purpose flour. Because a lot of times we don't measure these properly. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna scoop the flour using a spoon and rather than scooping with my measuring cup. A lot of times we like to scoop with the measuring cup into the flour, but if we do that, then we are actually packing that flour uh, into our measuring cup. And when it's packed like that, you're actually adding a lot more flour than what you really should be. So that was a half of a cup. You're gonna see, I'm now gonna add a fourth of a cup and that's gonna equal three fourths of a cup of all purpose flour. So I'm spooning it in, I'm getting a little bit more and then I'm using the back of my knife to help to level it off. Add that to my bowl. And that's my all purpose flour. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add my other flour. So we also have three fourths of a cup of whole wheat flour. So the whole wheat flour here, I've already measured. I'm gonna add that. But the whole wheat flour, of course, is gonna provide a little more nutrients than that all-purpose flour. Because when you're using whole wheat flour, you're using the whole kernel, that whole wheat kernel. And that kernel of that grain actually is gonna have the endosperm, it's gonna have the germ, and it's gonna have the bran. It's all intact. And basically, the bran and the germ is what has all the nutrients has antioxidants, a lot of B vitamins, a lot of dietary fiber. Uh, and so it's all included when you're using that whole wheat flour. However, if you're using all, your all purpose flour, what they do is they take out that germ and they take out that bran and all that's left is the endosperm. And the endosperm is just the starch. So you're really not getting a lot of those nutrients. So we're using whole wheat flour, but we're doing half and half. So half whole wheat flour, half all-purpose flour. And the reason why we wouldn't want to do all 100% all-purpose all flour is because then your product is just, um, excuse me, all 100% whole wheat flour is that your product would just become really dense and just like really heavy. And so that's why we would want to do half and half and include 
half all-purpose flour and half whole wheat flour. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna add now my brown sugar. This is a half a cup of brown sugar. And that brown sugar is of course um, gonna be my, my, my sweetener. This is my added sugar that I am adding, of course, you know, to this. Now, brown sugar um, is, you, you might kind of wonder like, well, why, why is it brown? Um, and the reason why brown sugar is brown is because molasses is added to brown sugar. So brown sugar is actually just white granulated sugar. Uh, when they make white granulated sugar, uh, molasses actually forms and then they take out that molasses. But with brown sugar, they put the molasses back in. So that's what brown sugar is. It's not any healthier than white granulated sugar. Um, nutritionally, it's very, very similar. It's about the same. So you're not really gonna be you know, making um, your product any healthier by using brown sugar. But the good news is, is that we use a half a cup of brown sugar and the original recipe called for three fourths of a cup. So we were able to decrease that um, by a fourth of a cup. And that's just because we have a lot of the other sweetness in our muffins. So we added, you know, again, that pineapple, that's gonna add a lot of sweetness, a little bit of the applesauce. And then of course, we've got our spices as well too. And we'll show you that here in a minute of a lot of cinnamon and stuff. And that can help just enhance the flavors so that we don't have to use a lot of sugar. Next up, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of baking soda. And as we mentioned, that's our leavening agent. And that's what's going to react with that vinegar, that acid to make that carbon dioxide, make those bubbles. And this is what's going to then of course, help our product, our baked good to actually rise. And lastly, we've got one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a fourth of a teaspoon of our um, uh, ground nutmeg, and then we've got a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna add that. And you don't have to add salt if you are trying to decrease the amount of sodium in your diet, you can certainly omit the salt. Um, but all of these spices and the salt is there to just enhance the flavors. So we're just gonna mix our dry ingredients now together. And then we're gonna add our wet ingredients to that. And when we do this, we're just going to um, kind of gently combine Bind them. We don't want to stir too, too much. Again, just kind of gently combined everything to where your dry ingredients are kind of evenly mixed with the wet ingredients. If we stir too much, we're just gonna um, make the product a little bit uh, heavier, a little bit more dense. Okay. And so then what we're gonna do is we're going to just go ahead and fill our muffin tins. So I've got my tin here. I've already sprayed my muffin tin. So this has been sprayed with some cooking spray. And then what I like to do is I kind of like to just fill up my measuring cup a little bit. And then just kind of go ahead and we're gonna fill in our muffin tins. And you're gonna try to fill it probably about three fourths full. Um, that's kind of what you're aiming for, about three fourths full. And you're gonna go ahead and fill them all in. And then you're gonna put them in a preheated oven. So I already preheated my oven to 350. We're gonna bake these for about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, and then when they are all finished, we of course have our finished product. So there they are. And no, you can't eat all of them all at once. Um, but you know, one muffin, one muffin is only about 140 calories and 12 grams um, of, let's see, 12 grams of uh, total sugars and nine grams of added sugar. So that's a lot, uh, a lot less added sugars than what you're going to see in a lot of other muffin recipes. And particularly if you're buying muffins like at a bakery, uh, you can go and get a muffin at a bakery and it's about 30 grams of added sugars versus nine grams. So this is a lot better, um, certainly one that's gonna have a lot less of those added sugars. Now these muffins, they, are, um, they have a lot of moisture to them. 
So I would even recommend uh, putting them in the refrigerator and storing them in the refrigerator for you know about four days or so, um, just because they do have a lot of moisture in them. And so they'll just last longer if you do that. But they're great muffins. And what I love about them is that you can have them for breakfast, you can have them for dessert, you can have them as just a side dish or a snack. Um, they're really versatile and they go great with so many other different types of dishes as well. Okay, I think that's all I have. So I'm gonna turn it over to Kristen now. Thank you, Jenna. That looks delicious. I wish I could just reach through the screen and grab one of those muffins right now. My tummy is grumbling. Um, and thank you, Diane, for all of that wonderful heart health info on how we can reduce added sweets in our diets. So before we get to the questions, because I did see several come in, um, I just want to do a quick wrap up and let you know that we have a series coming up called Eat Fresh, Eat Local. Um, registration for this will be coming out soon, so keep an eye, an eye out. We also have a very short survey that I'm going to put into the chat box. And once you finish the survey, you will be redirected to the handout and the recipe that go along with this session today. And again, a recording for this session, along with the other ones that we have done so far, will be available within the next 48 hours and we'll send the links to those in a follow-up email. All right, so let me go back and look at some questions here. Okay, so the first one I see is for Diane. And the question was, I add the baking powder, sugar, vanilla, et cetera, while the butter and sugar is creaming. Is it okay to do this or is it lessening the adding of air pockets? I would say that um, you really should just cream the, you should follow the directions in your recipe. And so, um, typically those types of things are added towards um, the end um, of the recipe. And so often one of the first steps is to cream the sugar and butter. So I would just follow the recipe. Um, it's written in a way that um, is going to um, allow you to have the most, um, get the most out of your recipe. Okay. And it looks like a couple of the questions were answered in the chat box. So I'll jump ahead to the next one here. Um, and this one is for Jenna. The question is, is white whole wheat equivalent to the all-purpose flour, whole wheat flour combination? Oh, that's a great question. So the white whole wheat flour um, is going to contain the, the whole grain, that whole grain kernel. So it's gonna be much more um, equivalent to the actual whole wheat flour, the 100% whole wheat flour. Um, the white whole wheat flour though, is just going to have whiter color. So it's going to look whiter. It's also gonna have a little bit more of a mild flavor. So it's not going to be have as much flavor as your 100% whole wheat flour. So the way you would use the, the white whole wheat flour is basically just as you would use whole wheat flour. So I still would not recommend using 100% whole white whole wheat flour in this muffin recipe. I would still do half and half. Okay, thank you. And um, similar question for you, Jenna, do dark baking pans tend to lessen cooking? Oh, that's a good question. So yes, um, the dark baking pans can do that. So you just want to make sure that you are, um, you, know, um, you know, monitoring the baking time. If you need to decrease that baking time by a couple of minutes, then go ahead and do that. Um, so yeah, just keep an eye on it. Turn on that oven light if you have one and, um, you know, use a toothpick to kind of determine as well. Um, whether or not those those muffins are ready for you. If they come out clean, then you're good to go. Wonderful. All right. Um, it looks like we have another question coming in, so I'll give that a second. Otherwise, all the other questions I saw have already been answered in the chat box. And there were a couple people asking if they could receive copies of the PowerPoint slides. And this might be a this might be a discussion for another day, but generally, generally we put the recordings and the handouts up on our website. Um, and the handout is gonna contain um, the key pertinent information that you're probably looking for. Um, so I saw a comment in the chat box earlier. Um, they wanted the um, slides so they could post something on their refrigerator. Well, the handout's gonna contain 
um, a lot of uh, key information with regards to how to calculate your adage, or uh, how to calculate teaspoons or tablespoons of sugar, um, what to look for um, in your nutrition facts label and ingredient list, um, and what the um, dietary guideline recommendations are. So a lot of very helpful information. And if there's something in the handouts that, um, or if there's something from the presentation that you are looking for that may not be on the handouts, please uh, get in touch with us and we can get that to you. And yeah, it looks absolutely. Tammy, Tammy, do you have a question? I saw that you had, you said you have a basic question you wanted to ask. Thank you everyone for the kind words. Yes, this was a fun series and we're looking forward to the next one that's starting in April. Okay, here's another question here. Would raw sugar contain the nutrients white processed does not? So, um, I, I would have to look um, for more details regarding uh, raw sugar. When I think of raw sugar, um, ironically, uh, my parents worked at a sugar beet factory. So sugar beets are then processed and turned into um, sugar. So when you use the term raw sugar, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Um, so if you wanna enter your email ad um, address into the chat box, um, I can reach out to you to get um, some information to you. She did mention sugar cane, not beet sugar. And she put her email in the chat box. Did you see that, Diane? Um, actually, I can't see the chat box with okay. my screen. But yes, we will definitely follow up. So Kristen, I will if you want to email. pull that information, yep, thank you. Of course. Thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in today. We, uh, we're glad you have enjoyed these webinars and hope to see you again in the future. And I have a few emails, so I'll make sure to grab these so we can follow up with you um, with any other questions that you might have. So I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the sunshine and the spring showers. Yes, thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.